just Corey Dillon, he played for the Bengals. Would drop a heck of a stiff arm on you. There was a lot of stuff, you know, back and forth that was done in Cincinnati that I left in Cincinnati. Are you averse to having a future back? Well, like when Corey Dillon ran for 1,600 yards, would I be against that? Yeah, I don't think so. New England clearly in business, and guess who? Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon. <laughs> when he's in there for a touch, they think about where he was a year ago at this time. Now he's in the end zone in the Super Bowl. With Corey Dillon injured, running back Rudy Johnson emerged as a solid replacement. Dillon had a career low this past year, rushing for just 541 yards after posting six straight 1,000-yard seasons. Great move for me, a great move for the organization, and I'm just happy to be a New England Patriot. I might break down in tears once I get in the locker room. I just, I mean, I'm so excited, I don't even know what to do with myself. It's a We're great team. World, yep. That's all I can say. Touchdowns has raised the question, who is the best running back of the Belichick era here in New England? And that would be Corey Dillon. And the Cleveland Browns have to figure out a way to stop him. Well, the key for the Browns today begins and ends with stopping Corey Dillon. Look at his offensive line. Back. That is so special. Those guys have worked so hard tonight. And the people that have come out to support these Bengals tonight had a chance. What to it do? What it do? It's your man, Beso513, and I'm back again. Listen, I hope y'all really enjoyed that intro. But before I get into the rest of this and why my man should be in the Hall of Fame, because it is a damn shame, I'm going to let y'all get a little backstory. Then we're going to hop back in. Let's go. Rated by many to be the top junior college running back in the nation. Corey Dillon returns to Seattle where he starred at Franklin High School. Dillon broke O.J. Simpson's junior college career total yardage record after rushing for 1,900 yards and 20 touchdowns. While at Garden City, Kansas Junior College, Dillon also played free safety. And while most believed he could step in and start for Washington there, Dillon insists on running the ball for the Huskies. Recruited nationally, Dillon visited Washington State, Texas Christian, Brigham Young, Tennessee and Washington before signing with the Huskies. So I thought that was amazing, y'all, the fact that this man broke OJ Simpson Juco rushing record, which probably stood for over 30 years. And then the fact that he could have went to Tennessee back then when Tennessee was like Alabama. A lot of people don't realize how good Tennessee was back then. They had Peyton Manning. Like he could have played with the number one pick in the following year's draft. Or he could have went to Washington State and played with Ryan Leaf, who was the number two pick. Okay, he was a bust, but I mean, just 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 think about what could have been, what hindsight being 2020. But I guess ultimately he made the best decision for himself, and that's why he had a hell of a collegiate career. I mean, when I combine his total numbers from his JUCO and his year at Washington, this guy rushed for over 4,000 yards, 759 yards, excuse me, and 60 touchdowns. I mean, that's amazing. While at Washington, he set the NCAA record for most total yards in the quarter. He had 305 total yards in the quarter, 222 rushing yards, and 83 uh, receiving in one quarter. So this man was a hell of a college football player. He was a hell of a running back. And it's a damn shame that he went to the second round, but I'm grateful that he failed to my Bengals. So jumping back in, I want to talk about Corey Dillon's rookie season. Uh, he broke Icky Woods' rushing record. He finished the season with uh, 1,129 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns, 259 receiving yards. So for an all, with no touchdowns receiving, but an all-purpose, 1,388 total purpose yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. And I wanted to figure out why he didn't win Rookie of the Year, and that award went to Warwick Dunn, who was the first-round draft pick by the Buccaneers. And Warwick Dunn had 978 rushing yards and four touchdowns, but he put up 462 receiving yards with three touchdowns. So for all-purpose, he had a little more uh, all-purpose with the 1,440 uh, all-purpose yards, but he only had seven touchdowns. So if I'm looking at numbers, I would go with Corey Dillon because as a running back, he uh, produced more yards and he had more total touchdowns. But I think the reason why Warwick Dunn, another reason why Warwick Dunn won, it's for the simple fact that the Buccaneers went 10 and 6 that year and they, and they won a playoff game. And the Bengals surprisingly were 7 and 9, but I just think maybe the voters just, you know, overlooked Corey Dillon for the simple fact that he played for the Bengals. Also, Corey Dillon broke a 40 year record um, for the most rushing yards in the game for a rookie that was held by Jim Brown, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest, if not the greatest NFL player of all time. So it's, it's kind of a damn shame that Corey Dillon didn't get the love you know, from the NFL voters, even though he played in Cincinnati. 
So in Cordell's first six years, he was one of only four players in NFL history to rush for six consecutive thousand yard seasons, man, that's amazing. Obviously in year seven, he got hurt, which was Marvin Lewis's first year in, in, in Cincinnati. And the same year, Rudy Johnson just, you know, popped out of nowhere and was able to fill his shoes pretty quickly. That following off season, he was traded to New England. So in year eight, he had career highs and carries yards and touchdowns in his first year in new england at the age of 30 and he also won the super bowl ring so that had to feel amazing after all of those years wasted in cincinnati of prime i mean we talk about prime abilities all spent in the 513 he played his last season in 2007 at that point or at this point now in history he is officially ranked 20th all time in russian and it's just a damn shame that he's not even in the conversation of hall of fame so it's a blitz. He gets the call. Looking to turn it upfield. Aldridge makes the stop at the 23. Let's take another look at that run, John. You know, so I had to throw the Corey Dillon chance in there for man, y'all. That was just a classic moment for me. Nostalgic. You know, uh, from the PS2 days with the Corey, Corey. They, I, I believe they did that for Eddie George as well. Matter of fact, I know they did, you know what I'm saying? So I had to throw that in there, that was classic. Um, I want to take it back to when I was talking about the Rookie of the Year situation. One thing I, I didn't mention was that uh, work done was very similar to Barry Sanders as far as just being a little guy who can make all those type of moves. And we all know how great Barry Sanders was. So, you know, in the eyes of voters, I can see, well, this guy's the next thing, you know, since Barry Sanders. So he has to be, you know, the rookie of the year. So I believe that played a factor as well. I want to talk about the 1997 uh, running back draft class. It was lit. I got to admit, because work done, you know, Tiki Barber, Antoine Smith, Deuce Staley, Priest Holmes was undrafted. And of course, Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon had more yards than all of those guys. But I will say Priest Holmes did have one of the best stretches for running back in NFL history. So I gotta put respect on Priest Holmes. He, I believe he he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But with just comparing um, him to Tiki and work done, listen, Dylan has something they don't have in a Super Bowl ring. Um, Tiki has way more fumbles than work done and Corey Dillon. And um, you know, people are gonna say, man, now nah, Tiki was better than Corey Dillon, but I honestly believe if Tiki played for the Bengals and Corey played for the Giants, with that media machine coming out of New York, it, it, the whole perception would be a little bit different. So let's just keep it, you know, all the way 100. Because that's what we do on BSO 513. We, we keep it 100, man. And then, um, you know, I just, I just love, I just love the fact that, uh, you know, in this day and age, we could just, you know, promote these things and, and put respect on people's names. Because, you know, he deserves flowers while he's still here, right? You know, Corey Dillon was one of the best players of his time. Uh, unfortunately, he played for the Cincinnati Bengals, but damn it, he has all the Russian records for the Bengals. Um, he would probably be one of the best, if not the, 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 he's the second best Bengals to ever play beside, you know, uh, Munoz. Uh, some people might say Kenny Anderson, Boomer Sison, Big Willie, and all these guys, but um, how many people could say they were the best running back for two organizations? You know, a lot of people would say Corey Dillon was the best running back for the Patriots. Everybody would say he was, he's the best to ever play for Bill Belichick. Unfortunately, they got him towards the end of his career. But listen, it's BSOL513. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time into it. I got more content on the way, man. Corey Dillon deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And it's a damn shame nobody's talking about it. Let's get it. I'm out. Just a couple of my whips, my toys, you know, my joy. You know, it's hard work. You know, I had to put in a little work to twerk these rides out here like this, you know. You know, but I switch it up, man. I go from, you know, cash rail to luxury rail to gangster rail. Oh, boy. So if you see me in the street smebbing, uh, count the smokes.